Now we can start the show. So my name is Candace Craw Goldman, and this is a very special live edition of the Quantum Healing with Candace show. And that show is sponsored by In5D.com. My good friends at In5D, Greg, Greg Prescott, Michelle Walling, all of my great friends at In5D support this show. And I want to thank them so very much for doing so. So today I'm welcoming quantum healers, Ron Amit, and am I saying that correctly? And Michael Garber, am I saying that okay? Great. You got it. <laughs> and I'm so excited to have them here today because they have further information what all of us quantum healers are talking about incessantly right now, something we like to call the event. But it's being experienced in so many different ways individually, but also collectively across the planet. And Ron and Michael released a YouTube video that I happened to see a day or so ago, and it was so beautiful, and it aligned so much with what is happening in my own sessions and in quantum healing sessions that are, are being experienced by practitioners in our original support forum community. So I wanted to have, um, you know, have them on today to talk about some of the details. But first, I would like for you guys, if you would, give us a little introduction. I know you've been energy healers for many years. You've been doing quantum healing, the Dolores Cannon method for what, in a year and a half or so. And I'd just kind of like to know a little more about you and your practices. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so we actually, our background is mostly about dance. We both grew as a professional dancers and all our energy awareness came through learning embodiment and dance. And then we grew into more energy awareness and we both, uh, I feel like had some realization of the art of the healing modalities of healing hands, healing energies, and also through the studies of yoga and the practice of yoga the awareness of the chakras, the awareness of um, the, you know, so many things that are spiritual kind of start to connect all those uh, avenue together. I think we just had similar and different path of awakening. Uh, into Our company is called Transformotion. We have a methodology of training the body to be aware of the many levels of the body, the energy, the mind, the emotions, and really how to become more conscious of the body and how it moves through space so that we can absorb you know utilize the energies that are available as the earth begins to go through this transition. Yeah. The idea is to, we're calling it embodiment of the higher self. So it's really just kind of bringing those energy and this remembering into our form and in this, into this transition. That's really such a beautiful thing to do at this time because so much of what we're going through really does have to do with the body, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just saying that gave me chills. Yeah. Yeah. I've also been teaching um, energy healing. It was, I was calling it Reiki for years, but now I've moved into what I'm calling embodied light so that we can, instead of thinking of the practice of Reiki as being with just the clients, that we can actually learn to work with light energy so that we can walk in the world and share it freely all the time. And not just when we're working with the client, but that we can embody that light version of ourselves and share it with the world. That's really beautiful. How wonderful is that? So I'd like to know a little bit more. I, you know, I've caught some of your, a uh, couple of your shows where you've talked about how in sessions, the information you've, you've learned. But my interest or my question to you now is, you know, I know you say you work with some people on a regular basis. Do you swap sessions? Um, are these other clients you're coming through? What kind of people are coming to you that are finding out information about the event? And how long has that been happening? Mm -hmm. I would say right away, as soon as we started to learn the technique, it was just like, I felt like we were put into a course of learning. Like we started getting clients right away that were going into very deep trance. We were getting history of creation, his, ancient history of Earth, other, other planets. It was really quite quick and we're really blessed to have had a 
quite a handful of clients that have gone so deep that there's really no filter at all in the experience. They are there, they are that lifetime, they are in that, having that experience again. So once we find a client like that, then we, we like to experience that relationship more. And usually at that point, um, that's where we invite the other one in. And then the two of us, um, you know, we see the client a couple of times, especially when we're coming up on these times where these events are supposed to be happening. We try to work with these clients again to get more information specifically about um, those events. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just also sometimes there's people that are going through a mentoring process. So then in the end of the conversation, we can just put the keyword, go to an, another little uh, moment to get information. And then it's part of the way that we see client more times. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so sometimes I'm working with, like if I'm doing the mentorship, we'll meet for some time periodically over the next few weeks, and then we'll dig deeper into their life and see what's going on and then connect with the subconscious again to get more information, more healing. And um, it's been really fun, especially as the clients get more and more comfortable with being in that state. It's opening up their channeling abilities. They're experiencing more intuition and more synchronicity. It's really beautiful to, to see them come alive. Yeah. That's really fun to know some of the mechanics here and fun to know that you guys kind of do, you know, a tag team thing here <laughs> and, and that you do more than one session. Sounds to me like you're already practicing something I like to call beyond quantum healing, which, you know, is the expansion of the whole idea of, of, you know, the more basic and classical past life or, you know, life regression kind of modality. And I just want to know more. We all want to know more. I know that you know Allison Coe and we've done, you know, some shows and, and connected with her and people want to know, know some details. I've taken some notes and I, I do want to ask you some questions, but one one that I'd like to ask you about um, is kind of this big one, the one that people are really excited about. And that's the idea that some people during this time, maybe this week or last week or, you know, upcoming, will actually physically, visibly see something come into their physical awareness. So not, a, you know, not an astral projection or not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a meditation experience, but literally will see something come at them from the physical. Have you had that kind of information come through? It's kind of mixed. What I, I feel like what I've been experiencing this energy is more about within my kinesthetic awareness and my energy awareness. And like, I can feel that something has shifted and something has changed. I haven't been receiving so much that it's going to be a big visible thing yeah. um, yet. I feel like, like Maybe it will be for some people who are who that's an appropriate experience for them. But I feel like we're still so much in the very early processes of this that what what it seems like the collective is ready for is to experience it in their body. Um, and then, you know, start to trust in this energy and trust in this uh, process more. And then I think the experiences will become more dynamic and more. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a great way to describe it, Ron. Same for you? Yeah, I also get more that they sometimes describe the color of it or they describe the information about it. But when we ask if, we, if we're going to see it, they normally say no. Um, but they do sometimes, they describe the tanning color that is, that is like those. They did mention that it's kind of a wave. Uh, very clearly, it's about this wave that is. Uh, happening three times now and then later on another one and um, I think also some people we were told that this energy kind of started in February last month if you think about 22nd 23rd 24th where I felt energy streaming through my body and I did have an experience that um, could be seen as a waking vision um, but and then some people were having these experiences in their dreams. Um, I had some energy, some chakras formed above my shoulders that were a new experience. And I heard of another friend who had the same experience, but in the dream state. So I think a lot of this work, a lot of this information mm -hmm. is being revealed to us in the dream state. And then it actually came also in another session, mm -hmm. those just mm -hmm. 
And also for me, I had on the 22nd of February when we had the first, I experienced the first wave, um, I had an astral traveling, astral projection experience that I did saw this wave uh, coming into the valley. And for me, I didn't listen yet to the recording of Alison before. So when I heard what she describing, I was very excited because I got to see it but in a, in a different state of mind. Yeah, so we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll <end soon. laughs> I think that too, it's like we're, we've, we go through this cycle of like anticipation of like what it could be. And then it's just like, it's so unique to each person it feels like. And so I'm just really trying to be more present and trusting that the experience for me will be what it needs to be. I had someone on the East Coast contact me after doing my uh, show with Allison, the last one, the Q&A. And she said, oh my gosh, it happened to me. And, and we talked about it a little bit because I really wanted, you know, well, what was that like? And for her, she would, it was very real. It was very physical, but I tried to break it down basically like, well, was the person next to you? participating, you know, because I think a lot of our viewers out there kind of imagine this as being a singular event. And one of the things that, that I liked about listening to you speak about your information of it is that it is both a singular and a group event, it's, but it's experienced so individually. But this woman, she was talking about colors coming through. She called it purple, and she talked a lot about something I'd like for you guys to talk about, the, um, the shadow aspects. Um, mm. They're dying or integrating. Mm. Tell us about both of those things. Shadows? Interesting. Um, so from what I understand, um, in a lot of the sessions, there's a talk about the DNA and about um, these our star families, our multidimensional allies, those that are supporting us in this transition are really curious about the DNA. And what they shared with me is that the DNA is a, is a way for light to travel through the body. And that because of what happened a long time ago and because of many other things, the DNA has been closed off in many levels and distorted. And so what I see, that can be ancestral trauma, that can be things that the soul has brought in, but what's happening is as this light's passing through, it's kind of sh it's like turning the light on in a messy room. It's like, oh, you missed that, that spilled, you know, you forgot to hang that up, this needs to be finished. And so what I feel like is happening is those shadows, those limiting beliefs, those beliefs that cut us off from oneness are being shown to us. And it can be difficult feeling, it can be uncomfortable for some people at times, but what I'm learning to do now is to embrace it and to love it and be so thankful that my challenges are being brought up, my insecurities are like sometimes right here in my face. And so I'm learning to like not invest in them as a problem, but to invest in them as this being one of the last times, maybe the last time that I'm looking at this pattern, I'm ready to let it go. So I'm very you know, gracious with myself as I go through this. Yeah, and it does seem like the, it's kind of brought up as experiences in your life. You don't have to think about it just as like emotions. It can really be as like events that causing you discomfort and people that suddenly trigger you again or, or like it can really, uh, yeah, get to be experienced. Um, I hear so many people right now in such a transition kind of situation, breakup or like, just new, new, new definitions of relationships that are going on. And I think the most important is that defining your relationship with yourself and with your higher self. And basically what I also experienced, like even tonight, when I feel this energy coming and information coming through me as well, was this idea of um, committing to your higher self like doing your own little ceremony to hear those voices that speak in love within you and committing to yourself in your higher self experience. Um, Can I talk a little bit about working with the shadow? Absolutely, because I think that's important. At, yeah. I like that you mentioned it and, um, you know, there's different ways of looking at it. It's, it, you know, some people talk about it dying or going away. Other people think about it as 
integrating my own my own experience of just last week was sort of that I almost had like different transparent images of myself come into myself and make myself more whole. So please do talk a little bit more about that. I think what I'm what I keep hearing in these sessions is that we're returning back. We are returning back to the relationship that we used to have as a species with the earth, with each other and with source. And what I feel like will make this more smooth, um, the way that we can get more from it is to bring more ceremony and intention into our life. And that doesn't have to, that can be sourced from your, maybe someone's religious upbringing. But what I'm really finding is just to, you know, to spend some time, maybe it's lighting a candle, maybe it's singing a song, but to really bring, bring in the universal support for this transition and to do it with others or to do it with yourself, but to make more celebration of this, um, that it doesn't have to be this um, dragging along. We can celebrate the, um, the dying of parts of ourselves. We can celebrate the revival of parts of ourselves and we can do it with each other. And I think that's the big part of this transition is that we don't have to go through any of this alone anymore. We don't have to be stuck, you know, isolated. We can be together going through this and it's actually quite necessary. Yeah. I think when you, you ask about the integration of those parts, and I do think that the part of the integration is remembering that what we see is not all it is and there's, and basically it's a mirror for some aspect of ourself and in our, and many aspect of ourself, maybe in our pain, it's our, like be, like part of us that is integrating and maybe um, for example, I'm just gonna give example to make it more clear. For example, in your past life, um, you had finished your life in a way that wasn't so easy or maybe you feel like there's still a lesson there. So maybe you will experience some kind of a memory of that or some kind of um, realization of this part and you might even see somebody in your own life that acting like this right now and sending compassion to yourself about that and to the other person will just kind of make the closure about that shadow aspect and that's I feel like what I call the integration of it yeah that's really beautiful um, I wish you guys were my neighbors <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> Walk around a little bit, and uh, I, I really love that though. This this idea of connecting, you know, you can connect with another person without actually talking to them, right? You don't have to, you don't have to get in their space, especially if they're not ready for that. Yeah. You, can, you know where I find that that's where I tend to do that is walking through airports, mm. pass through so many different yeah. right? <laughs> soul groups and things like that. That's really really quite beautiful. Um, another thing that you mentioned, I really was so interested in this, is um, this idea that this, this wave is beginning as fire and ending as water. You know, I've heard Dolores in my own mind, Dolores Cannon say, water is liquid consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's so beautiful that maybe, you know, the fire aspect is doing something with us here and ending with water, which, mm -hmm. um, again, is so akin to the consciousness in our own body. Tell us a little bit about the fire and water. Mm, okay. So I've been experiencing this process as a burning away of parts of myself that are just not needed anymore. I have experienced that burning sometimes in my heart. That's where it seems to be a lot of the work is being done right now for me. And I'm just allowing it to burn. I'm allowing that, that stuckness to just, to, to burn away, to go away. And I feel like what will then happen once all of this, um, once we get to the next level of this process is the water element comes in to replenish, rejuvenate, revitalize, almost like a, a little treat at the end of, uh, of the hard work. You know, I know you've been through a lot and here's, here's some replenishment. Yeah, I feel the fire is also, of course it's very transformative, but it also can be fueling and motivating and can also add the aspect of um, all the colors. And it's, mm -hmm. it's also, um, yeah, I think there's something in the motivation, in the passion that fire can give to 
also understand what your life's purpose, what your mission now, how you're integrating your new being into like your service, what you want to do as a service in your life. And then the water, um, of course, as you said, is consciousness. There was beautiful sessions about connecting the water to, to like the 12 dimensions of water. And, and, the, we, and we also got a lot of messages about water, putting the intention in water praying with the water. and praying with the water, crystallizing the water because the water are crystal and drinking it and becoming more crystalline ourselves. Um, so I think the water after is allowing us to align ourselves with the consciousness of the earth, but also of the consciousness of the universe. Of the universe. Yeah. And it's connecting us to like whales and all that are connecting to the universe. We are also being more aligned to the universe like that. So beautiful. In, in my own um, practice of beyond quantum healing, the whole thing starts with putting the intention of of the session in water and then drinking it and the the practitioner also does the same in intends for the session with the client a way to hold space with the client with water and intentions i have to ask though oh my gosh 12 dimensions of water cool tell us a little more about that i don't i don't remember you speaking of that before. <laughs> so I think they basically spoke on like different pools of knowledge. So every pool is like a collective. So if you look at every dimension as a water pool, so you can basically see this kind of waterfalls from different pools into like us. And so there's a bigger pool and then a smaller and then smaller and smaller and just kind of, uh, I think it's kind of imagining the collective consciousness of that level. Um, that's how I imagine it and when they spoke about it it's you know sometimes they're so poetic with their images and with their like so it's just what you take of it and the energy that you feel at the moment and so I think that's a little bit my story about what they mentioned about that 12 pool. Mm -hmm. I think what's also like the water is the record keeper of, of this of this planet it's been around since you know the beginning and we'll be here for as long as we take care of it and so i think it's really important at this time for us to start bringing more intention like what you're sharing is so beautiful it, like my heart opened when i heard about this ceremony that you do with your clients it's like you know how often we're just drinking our water and just throwing it back or we're drinking other things and for us we've put a you know we go and we find water we go to and get living water from a spring and this is the water that we're drinking and you know we're praying with it we're singing we to put it crystals inside um, you know just to to ask that this because once you program it then it can do what you want it to do so it can program it to to help this transition be smoother for you or to wash away impurities or to bring you new energy and just by charging this water and drinking it you're taking in life into your body um so I'm all for celebrating water as much as we can, yeah. So beautiful. You've been speaking of ceremony for mm -hmm. quite a few minutes, and I find it interesting that, um, you know, a lot of our, especially Western society, has very little ceremony day to day that, well, special ceremony anyway. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then I find that some people kind of fall into different kinds of things that, from my perspective anyway, is a hunger for ceremony, mm -hmm. you know, but maybe not the more beautiful kind of ceremony that it could be. And mm -hmm. how, how nice to think that just by drinking a glass of water, you can bring ceremony into your daily living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's where, what I'm finding in myself is as I'm bringing more intention to my day, finding, putting more moments where I can bring a little bit like with the water or something, I think it's really important that each person develops an individual relationship with spirit, with source, whatever you want to call it. But through that development of that individual relationship, and then all of us coming together to celebrate our individual relationships, then we start to bring, you know, a bigger celebration in. Um, but I do agree with you that people are, people are looking for something. People are, I see people are lost. People are hopeless. People are afraid of each other. And we really, 
need to remember that we're family here, even the ones that are grumpy, even the ones that are destructive. These are, you know, out picturings of parts of ourselves that are, are destructive and angry. And, and so we have to learn how to harmonize with each other and within ourselves so that we can come together in a beautiful way. Maybe I want to say, because you mentioned that, and I feel like that the purpose of this wave and this event basically is for the people that are ready, people that are intentionally connected with those energies um, to get prepared and to get crystallized to, the, to be able to hold more light mm -hmm. and to be able to, to guide others and to be able to be in their service. And I feel like this event is really mostly for the people that are uh, intentionally connecting to it. Uh, of course, everyone can feel the energy rising and it's amplifying something in them. Um, but the purpose of it, of like the higher purpose of what, the, the, what, what I understand about why we're receiving those waves is those upgrades for us to be connected. And I feel like, like what's happening right now that me that we are connected with you and and we're getting so many like mm -hmm. emails or when we put the post and people start to like tell us and we're bridging new uh, collaborations and that it's all about it's time for us to collaborate uh, together in order to mm -hmm. to change the consciousness the collective consciousness of the planet. That was actually just um, a message that came through really clear the other day when we were working with somebody was that they're just Yes, we're working hard. We're putting a lot, like people in general are working hard to spread this information, but we need to find ways to work together so that we can amplify our efforts and to do a mass sharing, a mass hands-on healing, a mass sharing of our light that we carry. And, and not to be afraid of the people that aren't um, used to this information. We need to be out there sharing um, and we need to be out there giving and being in service in a beautiful way, especially right now when we're like, we're there. We're, <laughs> it's like, wake up, hurry up, this cool thing's happening. <laughs> the party is starting, you don't want to mix. We actually have, um, we have quite a number of people watching us live right now and I just like to comment that scrolling on by, Trisha Kelly actually says, water represents the ripple effect and I like that idea about going out and connecting like that with others and I just now I swear Emoto's right here talking <laughs> he's talk oh gosh he really is um so I'm buzzing all over so if you if you you know this is alchemy at its at its greatest if you put intention into your water even as you speak you release moisture into the air that then is a ripple effect for your community. Such a beautiful way of looking at it, don't you think? And how about this being a good time also to talk about connecting with others, a ripple effect and the group connection. We are in our community, the original quantum healing support community. We are just now, in, in the next few days, we're arranging a worldwide coordinated event where we're going to be doing both live and online group regressions in all time frames across the entire planet, where we're going to be uh, focusing on these kinds of wonderful uh, vibrational increases and bringing in more light. And we're doing it on a very special day. We're doing it on a Sunday in April, the 15th, which actually is Dolores Cannon's birthday. And I <laughs> you guys are going to join us, right? Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we will be doing one here in Ashland. Yeah. How wonderful is that? We should be hopping around, party hopping. <laughs> Dolores is just going to be checking into all of them. <laughs> yeah. I can just see her doing that as well. How, how wonderful. Something else I wanted to ask you about too is you talked about this, um, that there are um, vortexes and portals just kind of sitting, waiting at the ready for those of us who are interested in experiencing them. Would you like to talk a little bit more about that? So um, with a client of mine a while back, he was talking about in the beginning of creation, um, which he called Aiden, uh, which was a new pronunciation for me maybe, it's, yeah, it's actually in Hebrew, you just say it, and I'm from Israel. 
So, in so, so he was just talking about how they traveled across the world at that time, but it wasn't with cars or anything like that. They traveled through portals, that so they would take their light body through the portals to travel to other parts of the world. And what I feel is happening is that we're returning back to, back to that state again, back to that way of communion with the earth and with each other. And what they said was that portals of energy are coming now for more light to come through. So Gaia is offering light. You know, we have star families that are offering light. We have light coming from the suns. And that in our dream time, they said, when we're asleep and we're, as and we're starting to learn how to astral project, that we'll be able to travel through these portals to meet with each other, um, whether it be here on Gaia or in other places, um, but that we'll be able to access these again. I also want to share a little bit of our own journey because from when we start mm -hmm. quantum healing, it's just like, um, our consciousness and from the sessions just evolve very fast and not so quite soon after our council of guides were talking to us directly and guiding us to go to location on the earth to do a ceremony and guiding. we were given gps coordinates of ancient sites to go to yeah so they basically sent us to uk to like to wales and we went to like a stomp like a circle stone uh, it's a hand, a hand. Mm -hmm. and it's a place that apparently we reincarnated before and we needed to receive some information from the land and they said that i had left information there in the land in that lifetime that i would come back in another lifetime to retrieve so we show up in this place um you know totally like a leap of faith a flight of faith to like it's, what are we doing we're going to this <laughs> weird place this like Anyway, so we, this is us learning to trust. This is us learning to look beyond ourselves and trust in the bigger things. So we get there to this place and um, it's a 5,000 year old site. Um, we go, it's, it was on the Lion's Gate at this last year, so the 8th of August. Yeah, um, we go into this site. Um, we went in at night after it had already been closed. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we put candles up, we sang, we, um, we sat together on the land and felt the land, both of us had the same experience, the energy picked up that went through our root chakra up through, um, up into our body, with hair standing up, it was beautiful. Um, and what we were told, we actually worked with Pamela Erlen, we called her while we were there because we were like, what's going what's on? Going on? <laughs> That's so new for us, yeah. we don't know what to do. And um, <laughs> she just explained that just as we are awakening, Earth is awakening and parts of the lines of energy, parts of the land are also asleep. And that when we're doing ceremony like this, when we're when we are intentionally connecting with the land again and with source. And with source, when we're bridging these dimensions, we are reestablishing the grid again. We're waking waking up the land. And so she would what was told to us that this land had um, had a wrinkle, they called it, a way of energy, and that there are others around the world. Um, to interact with yeah. yeah i think basically what's important is to understand that the earth have a grid of consciousness that that's the grid that when we make it stronger that's how we basically um mm -hmm. change the consciousness if you go to deadova.com she's doing beautiful work um, with traveling along what they in australia they call them the song lines but there's a beautiful map that you can download that goes with Google Earth so you can actually see all of the lines of energy and start to engage with it um, in a more conscious way. Yeah. That's and beautiful. Well, well, we'll definitely put that link on the video here. This video will be uploaded to the Quantum Healing and Beyond YouTube page. And I can also send it, um, you know, after the fact to you guys if you want. But um, let's, let's do that. Let's follow that. I know that I'm very... Um, Myself, I'm very focused on the land, and there's some things going on here. I live in rural Kansas. Some things that I, I am so grateful for and are so beautiful and some other things that are not so beautiful. And those things tend to hurt me on a personal level, but I also know that part of my reason for being near them is to help transmute some of that, mm -hmm. to bring some of my light and to, to hold that higher vibration right next to something that isn't, you know, isn't a sacred 
ancient site that isn't anything beautiful like a mountain, but maybe something else going on there where simply the intention and the energy of the person, the, the human being there can mm -hmm. help the earth in a, in a great way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just love that though that you got GPS coordinates. GPS coordinates, right? And the name and, and the, the name, name of the, the site. The name as well. of the site. She, yeah. And she, when she came out, she didn't, didn't remember, remember anything. <laughs> she didn't know what she was talking about. She, and that's just like so clear for us. And so, so through a client, you you guys were in a session with a client, and the client says, "Hey, you two, here's some GPS coordinates. Here's the name of the place." Yeah. And off you go, and and the woman, their client didn't even remember. That's amazing. I know that the Lionsgate um, last year was incredible and strong for me as well. Yeah. Uh, how fun that you did that on that date. That's just part of like leading up to everything that's going on right now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and what we hear that's going to be more coordinate events like that in more places at the same time. More people will get more information and also be synchronized to do it together. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of, I feel like, what I'm learning about this activation. And I felt like that's a little bit of our like initiation mm -hmm. journey. And we've also been receiving clients that it comes through from the subconscious that they need to, that they're given places that they need to go to as well or ceremonies to do or um, another client recently was told about portals that she needed to activate and to open and was given places and locations. So it's like, it's so beautiful and unique with each person, like those that feel that they're here on mission or feel like they're here to do something. And just when you're getting those nudges. So at other times when these kinds of transitions were happening, when earth changes were happening, people would receive information from spirit and they would guide their community, their village, to places of safety or where places where food was or, you know, there's this old way of, of receiving and, and communicating with, with life. And so many people are probably, I imagine, receiving this intuitive nudge to travel somewhere, to go somewhere. And what I feel happening when I'm going to these places is that I have information for the land and the land has information for me. And often I meet people on that path that also have information and healing for me. So I think we're in a time where we can start to trust these, um, these intuitive knowings, these nudges more. And if you're not used to um, hearing messages or feeling or receiving in a dream, just to this whole year and a half with working with this practice has been about learning to trust that there is something so big and so massive happening outside of my human awareness. And I'm being opened more and more and as i trust more and more bigger and more beautiful experiences come yeah. yeah i love that i love that following your own intuition and trusting yourself is really the key to it all yeah. there's something else i wanted to talk about this idea that that these waves of energy and other things that are happening are, are upgrading us upgrading our frequency but the part i wanted to talk about is I heard you, um, Michael, I believe it was you, were talking about this idea. Well, I'm not sure. One of you said it. The, like the, <laughs> we're the same. Uh, so. the, <laughs> the, yeah, the contracting, uh, like a birth. And it really reminded me of something our mutual, very good friend, Pamela Erland, who I just got back from Utah uh, visiting, as a matter of fact. Um, this contraction of, of birth, the, the way you were dis discussing that and kind of how bringing up some of these more sometimes negative or not fun stuff is, is a contraction. And I remember watching Pamela in a class and she talked about how, how it is much like that. And when the contraction happens and you go through the birth canal, it strips off mm. some of the stuff that needs to be pulled out uh, and released like another layer of that onion. Um, so this, this kind of con birth contraction idea is um is a nice one to speak about so it's not all you know rainbows and happiness <laughs> right sometimes sometimes some yucky stuff comes up but it's for a reason mm, yeah um it's interesting because i feel like sometimes when those people go so deep you know all their vocabulary are changing it's like they start to speak in a different vocabulary to a body they will say a suit or when they'll say they will say they will shed or like there's different terms that they use in a, uh, the vessel, the vessel will shed. 
or just so it just remind what I feel like and again I feel like it's very different to everyone so trying to speak about what it will be um, to each one is very challenging because um, some people might be shunning and some people might be going through other ways or doing different things there's so many many pathways to get to the same place um, so I'm kind of feeling that it's hard for me to try to describe to people what it would look like and I'm trying not to do it so often uh, and just remind that there's so many ways yeah. when we're talking about you were saying about this um, that through this process there's these things being shed off and I think that we have so many years, eons of limitation of beliefs put onto us that we're limited, 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 limited. And it's got us to a place where we're, we're scared of each other and we're hoarding resources and we're, you know, um, as a species. And I think that we can start to shed those layers off of limitation and open up to the, that we are an expression of infinite energy in a physical form and that we can open ourselves to being more than what we've ever imagined ourselves to be we have to actually imagine beyond the ways that we've even thought of at this point it's a new frontier um, we're going out into a new place in consciousness and exploring parts of ourselves in huge ways and then we have to bring it back that's the other part of the journey is that we have to share it Mm -hmm. um, and I think when we say to somebody, hey, I'm going through a really weird time right now. It's really difficult. Um, I'm breathing through it. Are you also experiencing this? And I think that when, once we start to say, are you doing it? Is this happening for you? you? How are you? Like mm -hmm. such a simple question and like really mean it. Like go deep, like really be with the person. And, and, and through, that, through that connection, through that conversation, both of you get lifted higher to even more limitlessness, you know, within that relationship. Just from hearing life stories of people before sessions, it's just so incredible to get to know humanity and their journey and the, how different the experience of each one, and just from learning the life story before they start the journey of the, of the, the hypnotic session. And then we go into the session itself and it's even more wild and even more different and starting to connect with star beings and being of light and and this information that comes as a collective is just like okay so we really don't know much of about each other and about the universe and we, and i'm just really um it's, I don't know, it's exciting and it's funny because just starting and i'm constantly trying to remind myself that i don't know anything <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I liked also this idea that you were talking about. Um, sometimes we we just are like little kids who are really tired and cranky. And oh. I thought, oh my gosh, that's I have a, a, had some time with my grandchildren lately, living with us, and uh, yes. <laughs> when you've got toddlers who are cranky, they're out of control. And, mm -hmm. and I like the way you described that. I had a beautiful session. One of my first sessions that really asked for me to believe in my experience that I was having. Um, so this client started to, he was at the crucifixion event. And the light body of Yeshua came out and started to speak to him. And I asked if I could also speak with him through the client. And the energy switched in the room. Like I started sweating, my hair standing up, my heart's racing. I'm starting to cry because the energy is so beautiful. And he's just explaining, um, like, what do you think about humanity? And he said, they're just like little children stumbling along their path, just you know, learning and growing and growing. It just came with such compassion um, for humanity and what and what and where we are and where we're going. And then in another session, they said that humanity is like children. They don't know what they're becoming or where they're going. And I just, I love how it can seem so ugly here at times, but there's still unending compassion from those higher realms. And I, and that's what is inspiring me to also be more compassionate with myself 
and more compassionate with those parts of this experience that you know are scary for me or I or I have a judgment about and so I it's just again taking away these ideas of limitation I can't love that well no I can love that I can be compassionate for that yeah I can forgive that yeah beautiful I love it when Yeshua Yeshua shows up in, um, you know, of course, some people call him Jesus. I just like find that there. Use them all. <laughs> show up in sessions that the energy of the room really does change. I, I'm in this old building. I have these bricks. I don't know if you can see them, yeah. a brick wall. And um, one of my most memorable sessions where Yeshua shows up, he was giving the heart of his physical form he was taking his heart out of himself and putting it into my client <laughs> it was it was so beautiful my client is is streaming cr crying all of <laughs> and guess what happens at that moment i didn't know it at the time i had to find out later but we had the biggest earthquake ever oh wow right, right here in my town and so the walls were shaking like this the ground was coming out from the bricks and all right as Yeshua is giving his heart to this country, like, whoa you know <laughs> it crazy. Oh. but it was beautiful and of course perfect timing right oh great oh. <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting for me like I never grew up with that like connection and then suddenly like having Yeshua speak with us so freely and give us so much information. And if you see session on our YouTube channel, it's Transformation on YouTube. And there's a few sessions when Yeshua speak and it's just incredible. We have this woman that seems to be, like Michael said, because I didn't read the book. She goes, yeah, she goes back to the same lifetime in Israel every time that we do this session uh, together. And this last time, she actually saw a woman speaking with Yeshua on the um, stairs of the temple and said that he was speaking with these women, that he was coming over. And that's actually in Dolores' book. It's in oh one of her. So she was seeing it, that same experience from another perspective in Jerusalem. Oh my gosh. So, so Dolores Cannon wrote two books. One was uh, They Walked with Jesus, and the other one was... Um, uh, the Essenes. It was in the Essenes. Oh my gosh! No, this uh, this experience that she was witnessing is actually in They Walked with Jesus. They walked with. Jesus. So as she's like talking about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've read about this moment. <laughs> <laughs> it was super super cool. That's crazy. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Sounds like you guys have had some really really great sessions. Hey, how can people get in touch with you? Would you spell out the website exactly and exactly where you are and, and how you'd like people to get in, in touch with you? So we are in a beautiful vortex of energy here in Ashland, Oregon. If you've never been to Oregon or to the Pacific Northwest, there is so much beauty and magic here, shining bright souls walking around. Um, so this is why we moved here. So we're in Ashland, Oregon. Um, our website is transformotion.org. That's T R A N S F O R M O T I O N.org. Motion, dance, get it, you know, getting it moving. <laughs> um, you can email us at um, either one of our first names at transformotion.org. So it's Michael at transformotion.org or Ron at transformotion.org, or you can just send it to info at transformotion.org as well. There's many ways to get a hold of us. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and of course, you're on our directory as well, quantumhealingpractitioners.com. You can start by looking under Ron's name, Ron M. Mitt. And yeah. you guys are going to be doing a group regression on April 18th. 15th. 15th. Sorry, what did yeah. I say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to say that we, we got guidance from our guides to the session online and we got uh, the information how to do it in a way that uh, everyone can experience it because it was very important for them that people that feel comfortable will be able to use it. So we, got, uh, we changed a little bit what needs to be changed and we're doing amazing sessions online. Yeah. And we want to offer it to people that feel that that's time for them and feel uh, connected with our energy. And we also do it, um, we do it by donation now. 
we really believe in the path of service and we have big plans of building a school of transformation and embodiment of the higher self. So we know also that this, the path of service for us and the money won't come just from us uh, doing sessions. So we share it freely. Um, we do charge for uh, just reserving your time. We do charge deposit to reserve. And then after you can uh, pay as much as you want or make payments or, or just support us making our dreams come true or our collective dreams come true. We're really wanting to experiment with the money system and we know that energy exchange comes in so many different ways. So we don't want anybody to um, feel that they can't have this experience because of money. If you're wanting to do this work, we are so excited to work with you. Yes. That's so beautiful, so beautiful. That's the definition of quantum healing and beyond quantum healing. Actually, I myself have been offering sessions online using a Zoom interface for about two years now. And actually, we are instructing um, BQH, Beyond Quantum Healing. The beta version is about ready to close. We're going to be offering this class the polished version of it uh, sometime in the near future, but the, the rough cut version as, a, as it is, is actually still being offered as a beta class. So you can learn how to do this kind of work, the work that, that I'm doing and that Ron and Michael are doing. Um, it's called, again, Beyond Quantum Healing or BQH. Mm -hmm. There'll be links to the bottom, or you can just come to quantumhealingpractitioners.com to find out more. I want to thank you both for being here with me today, live on this special Facebook edition of the Quantum Healing with Candace show. You have beautiful energy. People are really happy to hear about some of your adventures and sessions. Would you join me again someday for another show? Oh, it'll be yes, so much sure. fun. We could talk for days. <laughs> and I just want to say that we put a lot of care and attention to add videos online for people to watch and to get the information that people are willing to share. And it's incredible information. If you, I know it takes some time, but if you take some time to listen to information, I know it was expanding my awareness so much and was so beneficial for me even before I started to, to have session myself. Just to listen to sessions, that's just a big transformation just by listening. The energy is coming through. So, yeah, enjoy that. And Candice, I want to thank you so much for the fire that you hold and carry and the light that you share. It's so beautiful to watch the magic that you're bringing into this world. Thank you yeah. so much. Well, thank you, too. I couldn't do it without your support and many other people's support. So you can find me at CandiceCrawGoldman.com or, of course, at QuantumHealingPractitioners.com. And that's all for us today. Once again, thank you, Greg Prescott and N5D, for sponsoring this show. Hey, guys, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you.